How will you feel when you're uh, about 18 months off 80? Well, I don't think I'll make it, you know. Got you? I don't think so, no. I'm working too hard. Get away. Get away. <laughs> Looked at them hands, they're nice and soft and clean. Have they ever been mucky? Uh, yes, I did six years in the army, you know. Uh, you have no hose, that's how I feel it. You have no hose, the note. Oh, they're nah. all clean. Yeah, look, 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 my roof. Roof, getting trapped at wheels. No, I shouldn't want to be so soft. I'm glad I went to rough it. Yes, glad I went to rough it. Percy Shaw roughed it when poor and, in his own way, still roughs it today when he's very rich. This is his contribution to mankind, the cat's eye. Take a bus, Rosalind. Countless thousands of lives were saved in a revolution which began in this pub, Percy Shaw's local up at Queensbury above Halifax. Landlady in those days, Rose Linda. Driving home after an evening here, Percy had the thought which changed his life, affected all our lives in a good way. I used to drink here at Rose Linda's. She was a very charming person. And she entertained them in that bar, and they were laughing all the night, and she did stuff that, that you couldn't do in another, another pub. Like what? Uh, as far as drinking, uh, gambling, everything on the board. And the police never bothered her. No. They did catch her twice, but uh, it was all quiet. Everything died down quiet. She must have charmed the police as well. But she was lovely. Rosalind could stand in front of that place by place and dry her breeches. How did she come to need to do that? <laughs> he got wet. <laughs> she, she was she was wonderful. And uh, she never got married. Well, she was never churched again. But, uh, they were all her friends. Everybody were her friends. And I, I wish she'd come back on this pub again. So if uh, Rose Linda hadn't been such an easy-going lady, you might never have invented cat's eye. Correct. So you can just imagine going out on a foggy night and your headlights was no good and the only guide you had was the tram line in the middle of the road. Anyhow, we've struck tram lines here and we've got to get over and it's that foggy, your, your, your headlights simply make the white heat. You can't see nothing. So what you have to do is just put your side lights on and catch the sheen off the tram lines, you see. That, that sheen of the tram lines, you, you wobble in and I had some cars at that day were, were that loose at steering, well they used to puff them in tram lines. And then they used to carry me home, you see. But once you get off those tram lines and you have to go down that, that hillside, it's two yards, two thousand yards of a drop. And it, well, well, there were wood railings then, they put some iron ones up now. So you can just understand what this hillside's like. Are you all right? Mm. Good. Yeah, I'm all right now, because you've got your cat's eyes on the road. Ah, well, we're all right now, yes. <laughs> oh, yes, got my cat's eyes on. But anyhow, with the tram lines and that hillside, it, it caused the trouble. Mm. And they started taking the tram lines up. Mm. So I had to do something about it. One had guiding home from Rose Linders. Ah, oh, Rose Linders, she was lovely. She say, what a lovely night it is, isn't it, eh? She had the pocket handkerchief. So how did he come to create the cat's eyes that light up our roads? I was going up Hollins Hill and they had some of these lenses in a sign. I thought, we want that sign in the road. So I went, got up Hollins Hill and pinned some lenses out that sign uh, and found out they come from Bradford. So I went and bought some from Bradford and chipped them and mucked them about and found out they came from Czechoslovakia. So we 
licked about with these lenses and put them in rubber or oh, a thousand different ways. I had them pointing up to the sky. They were no good pointing up to the sky. Trial and error brought them there. Didn't break. Trial and error. But did you think it was going to make you a lot of money or did you think you were going to do a bit of good to mankind? Trouble I didn't think at all. Percy's passing thought blossomed on this stern industrial hillside at Boothtown, Halifax. Grew into a factory in the middle of which he still lives a life little change since he brightened the night roads of the world and his bank manager's eyes. Some 20 million cat's eyes have been made here since that night in the 30s when Percy drove into history. Sentimental as any no-nonsense Yorkshireman, he made sure when he was boss that the woodman spared the sycamore he climbed as a child. They do everything in Percy's factory. Make the base of the cat's eye from scrap iron, mold the rubber, fire the glass. An old mill converted in wartime, it still has a utility make-do air. A factory as sturdy and unglamorous, as old-fashioned and self-sufficient as Percy himself. To his home, between workshop and staff canteen, he imports the few luxuries which interest him. Two rolls, five television sets, but precious little else. There's a 19th century flavor here, but this dark place illuminates the roads of the world. Cat's eyes see in the night glow in their millions on 35,000 miles of British highways along endless roads abroad. They light the way 600 feet ahead, shining through dust and dirt and fog, showing the world's night drivers the safe way home. In such a satanic setting, they turn out more than a million studs. Cat's eyes aren't made by men in white coats. Studs sell at 10 or 11 shillings each, but by the time they're in the road, each of those dull, familiar thuds has cost the local council almost a pound. And every thump means another bob or two in Percy's pocket. Other factories have produced variations of this Halifax lifesaver, but they've found no way to keep their studs bright and gleaming. No way around Percy's patents, which were taken out in 1934. Reflecting lenses were already in existence when Percy was struck by lighting on the road from Rose Linders. What he did was to put them to work in a way as obvious and simple as any good invention. At first, nobody was interested. Then came the war, the blackout, and in 1941, this factory leapt into production flat out. For cat's eyes were seen to be a revolutionary road safety measure. Each eye is a lens of crystal glass set to catch the headlights. Each goes through 40 stages of production, and a skilled operator turns out 2,000 a day. The rubber pad from which these eyes shine is clipped into the cast iron base, which is buried in the road. The pad's hollow walls have been so cut that when a car rides over it, rubber eyelids close, wipe away dust, and on wet days, wash the eyes. Each one's a blinking marvel. But this top, which takes the traffic's thump, must be replaced every five years or so. And that supports Percy's daily round, winter and summer at the Halifax Golf Club up at Ogden. His cat's eyes are exported round the world today. Base plates are produced abroad, but Percy doesn't really trust foreigners. So the patented know-how for pads and eyes stays right here in Halifax. If he let foreign concerns manufacture under license, he'd be far richer. So, eight daily miles across the moors, which isn't bad when a golfer's pushing 80, and then back to the rolls. 13,000 pounds worth of transport with only 7,000 miles on the clock after more than two years. As you get to know Percy Shaw, this regal rolls is perhaps the most uncharacteristic thing about him. 
along with that number plate. In every other way, he's the most unshowy man. He keeps to himself and only goes inside the works on Sundays when the place is deserted. His workers, 120 of them, average less than 20 pounds a week. The women, about 10 pounds. There's no union. Instead, an abrupt, amused loyalty to old Percy. They don't often leave. The canteen subsidized. Percy's interested in food, though not interested enough to employ his own cook. He's a do-it-yourself man with a kitchen that, like his life, is unusual, but exactly the way he wants it. Substantial joints hang in his walk-in coal store. We'll eat it as quick. He likes display shelves instead of cupboards, so he can see just where everything is right away. He does all his own cooking, and Percy is not one to underestimate his talents. This is a professional cook, is this fella? And every night, Percy throws a party, provides his friends with drinks, crisps, and a cut off the joint. Give us a bit more fat now, a double doors of fat. All in order. Put it on top of the oven. Switch on. Oven on, 350. That's right. There you are. The invited sit before the four television sets in Percy's sitting room, which perform silently all day and every day. Should he spot something interesting, which isn't often, he may turn up the sound. Percy takes four pints a night himself. His hospitality is lavish, if not delicate. Now, at least a lot of these people, uh, people you've known all your life, they are. But do they want to sit up till uh, till two in the morning every night? No, they go home. No, sometimes I go to bed and they lock up. Do they? Oh, even there is just drinking up now. Yeah. They lock up and go home. <laughs> what time? Oh, it's only five. Five o'clock. Oh, it all depends if they're interested in a picture and I aren't interested. I'll take my beer upstairs and I watch the picture I want on to the upstairs. Well, you can come in here and have a drink with the picture if you want. Yeah, that's all right. Yeah, you can have a drink with the I don't quite see why you need the four television sets, really. Why four? Or well, why not six? Well, you have uh, six. Oh, we'll have six of the six stations. But there are there are four stations. Uh, there are only three stations. There's three of the BBC to a black and white, BBC to a colour. Oh, I see. But as soon as there's some more colour comes with both of them and get colour in. Right. <laughs> Uh, of, the, of all these television stations, Percy, which programmes do you like the best? What sort of programme? Uh, wrestling. Uh, good singing, Maura, Maura Anderson. Yes. Oh, well, that's wrestling, and it'll be on tomorrow night, I hope. And the musicals, you turn the sound up for the musicals? Turn the sound up for the musicals. Good music, yes. What about my program? Do they get sound? I turned it up last night for the first time, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I see. So I've been here when you haven't heard a word. Yes. <laughs> now, you've got so many plans for this place, your ballroom and that sort of thing. You, you're obviously intending to uh, stay here quite a long Sit time. Down. Another, another 20 year, 100. <laughs> <laughs> Haven't you thought, a man with all your money, that you could have made yourself a bit more comfortable? You see, the place is a bit bare, isn't it? It's a bit spartan at the moment. The water's run away. Well, I find if you're wealth, you're comforting everything. But you see, even though you've got, you've got your health, but what about a curtain on the window? What about a carpet? Oh, dear. Well, you can see out.
and when you can't look curtains you can't see out and and uh, it's much better when you can see out and, 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 and not being able to see out and when it's snowing it's a picture but you could have the curtains up there and draw them and then when you wanted privacy you could pull them you don't want privacy no. He never does know that's wrong. No. <laughs> He's dangerous. You know, I'm That's right. your brother. Yeah. 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 Your brother says you never do anything wrong. Is he right? Yes. Never Open and frank. Now what about carpet, though? Why not a carpet? Well, uh, the smell. And we used to have a lot of black clocks. <laughs> and and, and, uh, and uh, yeah. he used to come out there and they used to crunch. Oh. So therefore, if we had carpets and, and, and black no, clock and Champion. carpet, that are smelled. <laughs> but it's not very comfortable, is it? You know, isn't it a bit like a like a railway station waiting room? Well, uh, no, I don't know. <laughs> it's comfortable, all right. I wish everybody was as comfortable. I tell you, no. It's, uh, the old thing is that uh, uh, it's, you've got to keep active and. Uh, uh, cushioned up and carpeted up and one thing and another and you're frightened of a bit of cigarette ash. I can't see if there's any sense in it. No, I can't. They can come down in the morning here. A child woman, if she were here in the morning, all this would be swilled out with no mop and it would smell fresh. You can't get that with carpets, you know. You can't get that fresh smell in the morning. Unless you spray a scent round. <laughs> so you've been in this house, in this room, in fact, all your life, haven't you? I've been here 70... I was two years old and I'm 78 now. 76 years? 76 years. You think you're going to like it? <laughs> I, I, should, I should be able to like it in a bit when I get ballroom going. <laughs> oh, yes, lovely. Yes, we're facing south. Well, sun there, sun comes right in and it goes right across it to the side. So good. The morning sun and Percy's living room, its furniture all on rollers, gets its regular swilling out. There can't be many very rich men, many monopolists with worldwide businesses who live quite like this. Percy makes do with only one television set in his bedroom. So this is the home, the background of a most successful inventor who deserves the gratitude of everyone who's ever gone by road who's received an accolade from the Queen. And, come to that, from Nellie in the staff canteen. How many years have you known uh, Percy, Nellie? Oh, uh, about 40 years. Uh, intimate, like. He used to take us out in his cars and that, right from beginning life. What sort of a chap is he? Oh, very nice. Ordinary. You couldn't alter him. He's very nice, and I also see that he has his milk and his bread and his laundry. I take him his things in whatever he wants, and take him things on to eat and that. He's a bit of a, a bit of a lad with the ladies, I'm told. Yes, but not with me. Not with you. <laughs> no, he's never said anything to me, Lord. Never in his life. He'll say, "Good morning. Have you anything to tell me?" How do you find that Percy's changed since he got rich? Well, he had not changed a bit because I've seen him walk about with all pullovers on that's been all moth old. My husband has repaired him stuff many a time when coupons were on and that. No, he had not changed a bit. I suppose some people might see him as rather eccentric because, for example, he hasn't got any curtains over there. He has some lovely curtains. They're in drawer, dry cleaned. He has some lovely curtains. Cost many a pound. But he says they gather dust. 
do you, what do you, what does he do with his money apart from providing people with drink and that sort of thing? What does he uh, does he spread his money around much? Well, I don't get no but for his <laughs> Like some solid Yorkshire Buddha, Percy is his own man with his own ideas about life and you and me. In an unusually revealing conversation with this happy old bachelor with a bicycle, we're about to discover the significant approach to life of Percy Shaw, a Yorkshire original. Within this factory lives Percy Shaw, the Yorkshireman who invented the cat's eye and made himself a fortune while saving thousands of lives around the world. He's not usually a talkative man, but this remarkable old bachelor can be persuaded to reveal an attitude to his 79 years of life and good times. Uh, after breakfast, I listen to the music, and if it's sunshine, then I sit out there and then dinner time go golfing, 12 o'clock. And golf till, uh, I put my meeting open and somebody switches it on and get back about uh, half past three. And have a drink of tea and my dinner or my whatever it is. And then smoke and uh, probably fall asleep after being up on bringing the fresh air. And then we start a session at night. Now you've been poor and you've been rich, which is better? Well, being rich, I forget what I have and I forget it gets buried and I don't, I don't know that I have it. And uh, I simply spend my wage until there is the bill is decided. You see, you must pay a few pounds in income tax. Oh, well, don't talk to me about income tax. I might tell something. No, the, oh yes, over 30,000 a year. Tax? Yes. Well, you see, what happens, they don't give it me. They simply give me what I have to have and then uh, auditors send it straight through. And I reckon it took one year and I thought, well, I must be paying 37,000. But I wouldn't swear, so I don't take any figures in, in hand because they might be asking me questions and I know nothing. No, I couldn't say what it is, tax. You can live on your capital anywhere. Oh, very high. Uh, well over a thousand. Yeah. How long can you live on your capital? Well, let's see, what's today, Tuesday? It's Tuesday. No, when is it? Wednesday today, isn't it? You say you don't know who you're going to leave your money to. Oh, well, uh, when I get 80, I'll share it all Give a lot of it away. I'll have to be 80, 12 months. Well, 18 months. Thin it down. You're going to have a divvy, eh? Well, I'll give it away to my nephews and whatever it is. And leave myself with uh, security. Because you can't take it with you. What are you going to do with your money? I haven't thought about it yet. Well, you'll have to be thinking. How old are you? Yeah, I'm 43. Oh, wait, you're all right. Is your parents still living? No. Aren't they? No. Is your, your father didn't live in? No. Oh. Only well, my father only said Bulwark Reed. And mine were 90. You mean I might be going any minute? Oh, well, no, I couldn't tell you. <laughs> <laughs> but you can't get somebody out of note, you know. <laughs> <laughs> Your father was a was a, a dyer's labourer. You say he was yeah. earning a pound a week. Yes. Do you think that you now you're a rich man? Do you think that you are happier than he was? He was the most happiest, and he had everything. And my father, because all his children loved him, and uh, he hadn't a penny, and there was no bother because he had nothing to leave. And we all gave to keep him in his old age. No, you see, there were 16 when we come here. And uh, this room would just fit us up with meals, you see. There was a spit there, and it was my job turn it, spit, cook it, meet it front of the fire, you see. 
I might not fetching coal and firewood up every every day. And everybody had their own job. My sisters had to make beds. Uh, my father used to fetch us clogs. Uh, brothers had to uh, run errands. Everybody had his own work. Well, it only a pound a week, and my dad had uh, to bring us up. Of course, I was brought up at Booth Town College, you know. Yeah. Sent to work at half time at 12, 12 years of age. Well, but they didn't give us a bad education, did they? No. All right. Carry on. Apart from golf, what do you most enjoy doing? What do you look forward to? Oh, no, no, I think I've finished looking forward. Keeping good health. I, I think health is the finest wealth you can have. And uh, if you can keep that and keep fit, then enjoy your food and your drink. I don't know there's anything else today. What do you enjoy? I enjoy meeting uh, people and travel. Oh. But you don't travel, do you? Finished. I've travelled more than many people. I've been to America, Europe, and uh, all those places. I haven't been to Russia. We've been next door to Russia, but uh, I've been to Ireland and Scotland. That's far enough, isn't it? Lovely countries. Of all the places you've been to, which did you like the most? Uh, I should say Scotland. Hmm. Yeah, Scotland. You never thought of settling anywhere else? Settling anywhere? No. Could. In the sunshine, perhaps? No. Could I have a better place than this? Well, Halifax is a very sympathetic place, but nobody's ever accused it of being beautiful. Oh, I haven't seen Shibden Valley over here. You've been down Shibden Mill Inn. Yeah. When, that, when that's at, uh, in full foliage and bloom, isn't that lovely? Very lovely. Yeah. Oh, yes, very good. But these... Uh, no, you can't beat it round here. Uh, you're, you're, you're practically country straight away. Now, what about London? Would you like to live there? No, 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 it would be the last place. It was very nice at the beginning, but it's boring in London. It's uh, everything tip, 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 tip. You have to carry a pocket full of money, uh, and waiters, if you don't tip them, they, they put the change onto a, a tray, and, and it sticks past with beer that you can't get it off. <laughs> no, awful. <laughs> awful. No, I wouldn't like to think I had to live in London. It's, uh, it, it's very crowded, but still, it, it, if you've no friends with you, you're no good. You're lost. You're by yourself. Well, in a country like this, it's just, Everybody wishes you good morning and good afternoon and had a word to say. And especially if you meet them up more and they want to talk. They don't want to talk. Well, I find they didn't want to talk in London. They all, all aren't rush. Well, what, what's, what's the use of living a life of all aren't rush? And getting nowhere. Not enjoying yourself. No, I don't want London. I've had it. But didn't you rush around a bit when you were younger? Didn't I like what? Didn't you rush around a bit when you were younger? Uh, well, we biked through London there in 1912. Went to Madame Resorts for threepence, <laughs> and uh, I enjoyed that. They're all tacked, all had some cabs then, you know, no motor cars, and I enjoyed that very much. But now, no. In fact. Uh, I wouldn't like to drive through London. Can you drive through London? Mm, every day almost. You're used to it. <laughs> Terrible. When you all get bunched together, yeah. waiting at lights. Yeah. No, I look at taxi driver when we're all bunched there. I thought, it's all right, mate. <laughs> you're driving, you'll get out of it. I wouldn't like to think I had to do it. No. Not now. Well, you've got such a big car, that's your trouble. Yes. Yes, it's, it, it, it's, it's an handicap, I'll admit. But uh, they give way for a road. They do, they give way for a road. And uh, I think Bobby looks the other way sometimes, you know. See, it surprises me with all your money that you haven't got someone here to, to take greater care of you, to look after you. 
They'd want to be my boss and I want freedom. Yes. <laughs> They'd want to interfere. No. No, freedom and freedom and health is two valuable things. Yes. But freedom to do what? Oh, anything I want. Uh, please myself. But it seems the things you want are quite regular. You want the same things every day. Uh, yes, now. But previous, we used to have changes. Fresh women, as far as that concerned. What's the supply like today? What on? Fresh women. Oh, we're wearing out. <laughs> have you ever proposed to anybody? Uh, I can't say. When I've been fresh, I've done all sorts of daft stuff. So you might have been turned down for all you know. Yes. Might have been what? Rejected. Oh, I don't think I should have missed out if I had to be. No. You've always been a bachelor, Percy, haven't you? Have you ever regretted not being married? Well, I had to be a bachelor for my parents' sake. Well, you see, they were a big family. And uh, the others got married and uh, uh, I had to be a bachelor for old folks. And I got used to being a bachelor, so I stayed one. I found I could have my phone for nothing. You've been a sort of ladies' man, have you? Beg pardon? You've been a ladies' man. I've loved them. Yes, good. Can't beat it. And uh, you get into bother and you get out of it. You always got out of it, did you? Always. I've been very lucky. Yeah. Yes, I've been very lucky. I don't think. I don't tell you right. Oh. No. No, oh, they say I were uh, a he-man. Is there anything you regret, incidentally? Anything you regret? Yes, I mean, anyone, the, any the ones that got away? No. No, they all my sweethearts that got married, they write to me. They say I love them and leave them. <laughs> <laughs> no, I have nothing to regret. Well, c could I have anything to regret? Now, this, this is one of the, the, the women who's written to you, inviting you to her home. A free charge. Yeah. Well, she's not bad. No, very good. Are you going? Make one. Are you going? No, no, no. No, it's where do you start, where do you finish, isn't it? What would you do? Well, I'm a bit busy at the moment, but oh. if I wasn't as busy, I might go. Oh. Oh. I'm all right, I am. My freedom, my health, do what I like. And I'm going to stop that way. See, a lot of people think, now I'm speaking as a bachelor myself, if you're not married by a certain age, they think, well, there's something a bit funny about him. Oh, well, as I told you, I stayed at home for my parents. Yeah. I looked after them. Well, what's your excuse now? Oh, I'm, I'm, I like it. I enjoy it. What's yours? <laughs> I don't know, really. No. I don't think I've got one. No, no. <laughs> no, I tell you, health and freedom is a lot. Yes, you're right. Uh, and you're when right. you get tied up uh, 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 marriage, well, it's a gamble. And uh, it's very rare it's for better. Very rare. It's more often the other way. I don't know, with having a big family, well, I've seen... And I've seen all their troubles, you know. Oh, the one or two cancer deaths and but they all lived all my brothers were 90 93 uh, my sister on there 86 she said we were creeping up past all with her with her own brother in a bit but she comes on and washes up at afternoon and she'll be 86 next time but I, are you frightened of anything percy i'm thinking of loneliness really are you frightened no. What, with all these television sets and these here radios and golf and my friends coming in every night? Sometimes they have to put me to bed. Is there anything that frightens you, like darkness or cats or uh, no. heights? Or... No, I don't think so. Nothing? I don't think so. No, I can't. Well, I've forgotten. Anything that frightens me is having sickness out.
that's bad. Yeah. That frightens me. That takes away it takes away your liberties. Does that? No, that's the only thing that frightens me. If I got married, I should want one with perfect health. And never mind hotels. No. Can I have a smoke? Is it, yes, please. Is there anything, Percy, that you regret in your life? Any, any, uh, any of your girlfriends who got away, or people you've lost, or things you haven't... Oh, done? it's a big attachment when you start losing your family that you've, let, you've lived with all your life. Oh, when you've lived with people and they're all 80s and 90s, uh, and you lose two or three, your life will last 42 a year. Well, that's a big shock, you know. Up next on the list, we're pegging out, according to time. Yeah. Well, that's awful, isn't it? Think it we used to, used to think, well, they're all right, they're all in me. As long as they're living, I'm all right. I can keep on living, but they're gone. And same with sweethearts, they're all gone. Yeah. How's, how's all your sweethearts going on? Well, one or two of them are going on all right. Yeah. Oh, mm. oh, dear. You might be confessing in a bit. <laughs> <laughs> oh, some big troubles when it gets married. Sooner or later. What would you say was the happiest period of your life? We went to London on a, on a golden sovereign and left it a fortnight on a, motor, on a push bike. We had to sleep out because we couldn't pay lodgings coming home. That was my happiest holiday and my happiest period. And that's when you weren't rich? I tell you, it was only a golden sovereign. Mm. That was it. Mm -hmm. We had to bike it for his, uh, his transport. Well, we uh, called it Biggleswade, going. Uh, how do I tell it? With tea, a musical evening, a woman to sleep with, uh, bed and breakfast, five course of bed and breakfast, and then she turned it out into orchard to fill his pockets with fruit, one shilling. That one's meeting, didn't it? What was the fruit like? Fruit? Lovely. There was apples and pears and plums that we filled his pockets with out at garden. <laughs> no, it's a job. Anything you regret not doing as a young man? Any chances you've missed? No. I can't have missed so many chances. Otherwise, I shouldn't be as I am. Is there anything that you'd like to change in life today? Only myself younger. Hmm. But nothing in outside life? No. You're no. quite satisfied? Yes. Very satisfied. Percy, do you take much interest in the, in the outside world, in the world around you? Do you read many newspapers and no. books? No. Pretty. No. You're not interested? No. Why not? Well, why should I be where my age is past it? But you're still concerned. You're an active businessman. Your business is showing you a good profit. Aren't you worried about the state of the world? I'm not an active businessman. I've finished being a businessman. I've finished wanting anything. Only my health. Can you imagine how many lives you've saved? Couldn't. Couldn't try. Couldn't try. You see, when when somebody they put down and they guide them, that it stops them from getting into a, a predicament. They can't reckon those. Well, however many you save, Percy, I'm a motorist, and I'd like to say thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. We ought to have more profit than what we have, didn't we?